Hello, it's Fuzzy Wingman. I'm back, um, because as soon as I finished the other video, funny enough, as I was just about to start going editing it, the errata came out. And that's when I was like, oh, I played Consecration the mission wrong. And I also, well, the um, custodians have been updated. So, now that the custodians have been updated, let's replay them. Granted, instead of doing the just the simple straight guard, they're doing scions now. But it's still the same mission, still the same everything. So, yeah. <clears throat> I've already done. Let's see. Yeah, like if you notice the exact same layout, so it's really gonna be interesting to see how it plays out this time. It's basically kind of seeing how does the deep, the going to three action points for the um, custodians really plays out, and playing the mission correctly really play out. All right, so they gotta do a roll off. Uh, custodians won the roll off, so they can decide whether or not they will be the attackers or the defenders. And the defenders get to set up everything first. And who gets the the initiative if they're the same? The attacker can decide. So they'll be the attacker. They they like that option. Okay, set up barricades. I'm just gonna say the barricades from last time are pretty much where they'd want them this time too, since it really is helps particular objectives. Oh, um, select drop zone. Because the custodians select themselves as the attacker, the scions this time get to choose their, their um, drop zone. So they're choosing these corners this time. Um, so maybe I won't set up the barricades that way. Since it's within hexagon of their drop zone. <clears throat> so that's five. Hexagon. You potentially. What, can they go out to about there? Yeah, so they would change that up. Custodians don't fully care about these other ones, but this guy... Okay, so they were... Nine away. Let's... Leave a mark there, so that's the edge of that. Five in. It's all very rough. But that means to be within, they could go here with this. Now, there they go. Scion's really taking those barricades that the custodians just kind of flopped around to actually really get them on top of the objectives because that's what they really need. What do you know? It does need to change around a little bit. <clears throat> Glad I so still do as a double check, read the um, match play mission sequence. Alright, scouting. That's done after everyone's set up. So, set up operatives. Starting with the defenders, who the scions, and they get. They have to set up everything. So, again, I should. Leave this marked like that. Marked. Okay. And that's just five in from there. <coughs> there. Plasma should have some slight lines. <coughs> Let's do it from the head, so, you know, doing their best. Yeah. And the only other vantage point they can get onto is that one. <clears throat> they don't know if they want to be on that. 
this actually has cover and stuff, so... We're gonna put the medic up there with the plasma. And screw it. Heavy gun like that. Alright. I'm actually gonna recheck their stats. Alright. Yeah, I was just rereading what their um, tack ops were to see if there's any that I need to really focus on. It's like, yeah, it's okay. And I'm just suddenly remembering, you need to deploy with orders. Um. Do they want him to start with a uh, indicate shorter? I mean, let's double check the custodian's weapons. If he's getting shot at by that, by a spear. It's only if they roll crit will he have to worry about AP. Otherwise, he can auto save at least one with his defense of three. And with four shot, he, he believes he can be okay. He's getting conceal. He's getting a conceal for now. He doesn't think he's going to be able to really get up there. Bum ba dum. <clears throat> All right, what does comms do for science? It's very different this time around. He just can do the signal. To give someone an extra. <clears throat> well, you know what? I think he he'll be with a particular operative once I can get with that operative. Um. This guy's gonna actually be over here. With the conceal. <clears throat> and we're gonna put someone over here. Well, let's double check how long, far. Yeah, just trying to figure out one well, of the kind of objective things. Okay, so you. Well, how far? Can he get to that in one? He pretty much can, so he will go for conceal. <clears throat> Melto behind him. Um. <clears throat> hmm. <laughs> Melto will have the engage order, just in case there's a custodian over here. And comms will be probably running around with him. Since comms can give him the extra action, and then he'll really have some movement to do. So he'll get, he'll go into a conceal. Someone will go over here. Let's see here. He might have to end up doing some dashing or something, but he'll still have a conceal order. Over here with a conceal order. So they're plopping more of their models over here than over here. <clears throat> so the custodians can re basically counter deploy for that. But what can they really counter deploy with? So that's an edge. And that's an edge. I guess if I really wanted to, I could pull out the metal bit of that. <laughs> yeah, so they can't play up on top of there.
can deploy on there to get some... <clears throat> well, it might not be a bad idea. To at least throw one person up there. With an engage order. Essentially, his job is to try to shoot someone back there. But that also means he's probably going to get shot first by plasma. But that's okay. They're actually going to put this guy right there with an engage order. Because now Plasma is in his line of fire. And he's he's got cover, at least. <clears throat> then this guy... Hey. Does he want the engage order? He's got nothing over there. And he will be seen by, like, plasma and stuff. He's actually going to be kind of silly here and go into, um, conceal. Because he'd go behind here and somehow he'll be concealed behind that thing. Same with this silliness. Conceal. Okay. <clears throat> now we... S now that deployment is done. Scouting. Um, well, let me double check the wording for cover. Yeah, to get into cover, they're going to have to be, get, be closer. All right, which one's the leader for, um... Oh, yeah. That's the leader. That's actually important because they do have some, you know, leader things for the uh, silence and stuff. Alright, because of that, the scions actually want to select the, um... They're going to want to select the, uh... Recon... <clears throat> Scouting. And now for... Custodes. Did they want a free dash? They don't necessarily need it. They're actually thinking about the changing the orders because... This guy can camp here and then find out if someone gets close enough, he can go and switch to engagement. So they will infiltrate. Okay. And, um... That actually is funny because, um... <clears throat> that means they will still have the ability... No, they'll still go... No, get to decide who goes first. So first... Dash... The free dash to get to there, so that way he's fully within cover. And custodians get the initiative. Tactical ploy time. And well, first let's do the tack ops. You know that's that's the first thing. I I can't remember. Is that the first thing you do before the? You know, I keep messing up that face. Might as well double check it. You do the reveals after. Okay. So you might have an idea of what ploys you need to trigger for it, but you don't. Yeah. 
But either way, let's look at the scions. Alright. The scions are activating an order. Special fortresses. And they will select the mission action um, Consecrate Ground. And it can perform that action for one less action point to a minimum of zero. So, yeah, so the guard are clearly spending the one to give them the ability to just go, go, go. <clears throat> and since they'll be doing some shooting, do they want to do move instead? It'll actually give the order to move, move, move as well. So that will give people the ability to get on objectives and activate them for free. So, that's their strategic ploys. Let's look at the strategic ploys of the custodies. They'll do the um, peerless warriors. Can perform up to two shoot and fight actions during that activation. Well, they have only got three options now, so, you know, they're good, but, you know, they're not going to be as good. <clears throat> so what can the custodians reveal? Okay, so I have to reveal that at the end of a turning point. It has to be revealed after the first. And they'll still reveal this tack op because they're going to be going for it. Um, and can always have the chance of getting some luck this turn. Which is at the end of any turning point, if two or more operatives are incapacitated while within the circle of a objective. So basically they're saying, I'm killing guys on top of objectives. So... Scions kind of expected that. <clears throat> now Scions. That's when you add particular action. Particular action. But they will reveal triangulate. You can reveal the stack up on the target reveal step of any turning point. That includes the first one. So they just have to do the action triangulate. Um... Basically, they just want to do it on all but their own board edge, and they just have to be within square. So they can do boom, boom, and they'll automatically get one victory point. I mean, that's such an easy tack off to get victory point, at least one victory point off of. So that is started. Um, I'm now realizing that what they should have done with their dash maybe it was to throw this guy into the dash but either way custodians go first and they're gonna actually have this guy do some shooting actually no, no they don't want this guy doing shooting they want that guy all right he can see this guy um you can't really use the train below him as cover, you know, for cover or anything like that. Or the heavy thing. So it's really just this one. And as you can already see, he's nowhere within that. Which is kind of annoying, since the guy is, you know, in a conceal order. Let's see here. Is he really going to be counted as out in the open? Yep, so he, he's visible. And he would have to be crossing... Oh, that's obscuring, but not, you know... Well, <laughs> And the cover line has to... Let's see if his base is too wide that it causes a cover line crossing. <laughs> It looks like he's good enough. Since it has to be any point, and that looks good enough. So he's not obscured, unfortunately, since this is just light terrain. Yeah. He's more than circle from the operative. 
Oh, the, both of the following must be true. So if he's in cover, but he's not more than a circle away, he actually can still be targeted. Okay. Didn't really read that before. Walls. All right, so yeah, and so he, he's definitely not in cover. Oh, dang. Even though you can only see a bit of the guy, he's technically not in cover. He's got some shooting to do, so he's going to first shoot up this guy, because he is a danger. Well, he less of a danger and more if he just wants him dead. So he's got four shots from the Guardian Spear. Two's to hit. <coughs> Ooh, that's a crit. Three there. Crit immediately becomes AP1. Oh, joys. <coughs> so he has defense of three, now it's defense of two. Uh, four ups. Can he survive that? Okay, he'll have one crit and then he would take three regular. Which would still be enough to kill him. So he'll spend their final command point to re-roll this one. Because if he successes on this, which he doesn't, that's a shame. Because if he, had su if he succeeded... Actually, I should double check. Was there... I don't think they have a tactical ploy that would actually allow you to auto-succeed. Nope, that's... Yep, yeah, that's the only one, and it's just the bring it down kind of thing. So, he unfortunately has to take nine wounds, and he has eight. So, he is dead from that shot. The three regular hits are still very deadly. So, even though he's got a conceal order, he just couldn't get far enough forward because of deployment. And then the other shot... Since the guy could shoot twice, you know, that's what they did with their ploy, which I just really, does it just say twice? Yep, up to two. So, he's got his second action, he's going to fire at this guy. This guy's in cover, so, you know, he's got the chance to survive. Four shots. Okay, one miss, three hits. That's good. Because none of those were crits he actually gets three defense dice he automatically has one retained as in cover so he's going to live it's just how well can he live pretty well um that blocks off two of them so he only takes one which is three damage <clears throat> yeah three damage yep and um He's got eight, so he's got five left. So he's not even wounded yet. <clears throat> yeah. So that's good. <clears throat> and then what's he going to do, actually? Let's start moving toward an objective. Can't really be seen by these guys, so that's actually good for him. <clears throat> now, Scions get to go. They're actually just going to have him fire into this guy. Oh man, does he want to overcharge? He kind of risks it. They don't have anything to reroll. And they did move, 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 and free action points. Oh yeah, I just realized, this guy can't even consecrate this ground because... <laughs> that's what he did. <clears throat> so, But the plasma, he will... He'll risk it, he'll overcharge into that guy. He's very clearly out in the open. Oh, of course he rolled two of those. Oh, choice. Yeah, um... 8p2, though, so only one save. For the, um, yeah, the custodians have a defensive three. Yep, so one save. Crit, but a crit doesn't block two regular. It just blocks one of them. 
So only one goes through at normal damage at five, which is significant, but not worth the price that he had to pay for it. So that guy has 18 wounds. Let me go check. 18 wounds, so he takes five, so he has 13 left. The reason why I say it's not worth it is because of those two ones, he takes six mortal wounds. Dead. No, oh, that sucked. <laughs> um, this guy still doesn't really have targets. Well, he does. He has this guy. He doesn't know if he wants to use his action yet, so... One... Two... Three... Next to that... He'll actually consecrate the ground, which just means he can hold it better, but he still has only one action point remaining. And he's gonna stay there. He can't engage anyone, so he's now basically in cover. So Scions get to go. He's basically in cover, except for when this guy comes along. <laughs> You know what? He's curious. If he goes here... Haha, if he goes there, he'll be blocked by this, which will definitely obscure him. So he can make sure he can't get shot by that guy. So he's gonna go here. He's gonna move for one action, shoot for the other action. Because he's got the vantage point, so the guy, even though he's concealed, is considered with the... An order, so he will get at least his one cover. But we'll sh see how this hot shot Volleygon does. Let's see, here's that on this page. Yeah, here we are. Five shots. He could split them, but he's gonna go, no. He's just gonna put them all on that dude. Threes to hit. Two crits. So with two crits, it becomes AP1. So the guy's only got two saves. He will auto-save one of them. Does he want to auto-save? Yeah, because the difference between a crit and a non-crit is not huge. And he saves the other. So he's got two regulars. Yeah, he'll just save the two regulars. Takes the two crits which is eight damage. So he has 10 health left. So not a bad bit of shooting there. Now he has to really, they have to really decide for um, custodians. Oh, they'll be able to have some people with overwatch. All right, I need to kind of double check the FAQ a little bit about cover. Yeah, within a point, so the cover is just as long as one point of it covers you, you're okay. And the obscured is if, you know, like any, any point, so basically, you know, like one of these terrain pieces, as long as part of it kind of obscures you, you're probably going to get covered, well, obscured from it. Anyway. So, like, even if he moves over here, you can't shoot at that guy. Because if he's, like, right there, then, boom, part of the terrain is covering. Because they can do the whole change, the act, you know, when they activate. And they wonder if they want to switch him over to a conceal and, like, drop down behind that. Because he doesn't have many targets. All right, well, well, he could just shoot that guy and then move and dash or move and consecrate. So you know what? Screw it. He's going to shoot it. He's, he's going to activate now and then shoot this guy. So. Oh, well. When you draw the invisible line from him. To any part of this guy's base, you're going to 
cross over part of this heavy terrain. And if you cover cross up to here, at, one, at that point, it would be obscured. Holy crap, this new <laughs> reading points it out. So, because it would be obscured, there, he can't even shoot at that guy, regardless of the guy's orders. So, he won't be selected, because he has no freaking target. So, oh, choice. He'll stay there. He wants to shoot something. Um, this guy, he will switch to an engage order. He might be able to shoot something. One, two, three. And he's going to consecrate the ground. <clears throat> and that's what he's going to do. He can't shoot things, but actually he can shoot this guy. However, I think these actually technically, yeah, yeah, heavy terrain. So, never mind, he won't shoot at that guy, heavy terrain. And I just realized, do I have to actually worry that this guy couldn't shoot him? Looks okay. Yeah, like, doing a visual line from edge to edge. It looks like it doesn't cross this. <clears throat> Crosses a lot of light terrain, but you know. He's got vantage point. Oh my, man, these obscures are going to be a little weirder. Okay. Now back to the Scions. They're going to kind of screw that guy over by um, activating this guy who's going to triangulate for his first action. Second action, he's just going to get a little closer to the terrain. You know, he can pop up there later. So he, he's there. Um, that leaves this guy, this custodian. He realizes if he wants to shoot this guy, he's going to have to move. So, if he drops down, because it's a little over a circle... He's going to have to go at least one circle forward, so. One. Two. Screw it. Two. And then he's going to consecrate the ground. And he hasn't got anywhere ability to shoot at that guy. So, yeah, he's just going to kind of be there because he can't really go anywhere else. So, he's done. This guy... Yes, and he's consecrated the ground. That means he will actually classify as four for holding the objective. So that's useful. Oh, and he gets the whole plus one to... F oh, right. Crap. This guy consecrated the ground last time. That means technically he gets an extra defense dice. So I should roll that. He got a success. But... That means he would have had three successes, so he would have used two to remove a crit... And then taking one regular. So basically he would be up by one extra wound. Because the difference was three and four. There we go. Was able to rec rectify that immediately. Since I forgot about the Consecrated Ground. Also providing extra defense. So he's Consecrated Ground. So he's got defense. He's Consecrated Ground. He's Consecrated Ground. Alright. This guy. Well he doesn't have to move out of the way. So comms is going to do their signaling um, to the guy with the Melta and then pass for his last objective. And now Melta. One, 
two, three, but he gets to go one extra because of um, that. But he'll still dash to be there. Actually, no, he's going to dash to be there. So that way, where is it here? Like, because that guy will get some cover if he doesn't. There we go. He made it so that way this guy. All right, he's going to have to be very careful how he dashes here. The guy won't get cover, but he's still going to be close enough to the objective. And since he did two movements, but the um, comms added one to his APL. So now he's got a third one, and he's using his third one to shoot that guy because range. Boop. Well within. Guy is not within cover. He had to get that placement really precise to avoid that cover. Since the guy still gets an extra defense die, so he needs to make sure he melts this guy. So four shots. Well, at least three's hit. Oh my. So it would be two normal, but it's still AP2. So the guy's got two defense dice. Well, it's usually three, then he gets an extra one. Yeah, so, yep, two defense dice. He's probably gonna block these both. It's kind of creating a normal. He he blocks them. Dang. Yeah, that's what happens when you just shoot and you barely hit anything. This guy just ignores that. He's fired. Oh right, technically, um, after I'm I'm wondering if they couldn't if there was no one to. Can they choose to pass on the Overwatch? That's the key part. You can select a friendly operative. Doesn't necessarily mean you must. So they would not have selected someone to Overwatch on the previous time. So, because you know, this guy still wants targets. So now, this guy's gonna be selected. He's gonna shoot Melta because, you know, Melt is in front of him, and he really needs to try to make sure that guy dies. So, four shots. Alright, he's just got four regular hits. And that means he's probably going to take it here. But he at least will put one auto save. And then, can he get any other saves? Another save. So he blocks two of them. Two go through for a total of six damage, so he's got two wounds left. He lives, but unfortunately, he's now wounded. All right. <clears throat> so now back to these guys. And this guy. One, two, three. You could have gone a little bit more, but that's okay. Um... Consecrate, that was a free action. That's okay. You did it. <laughs> um, and now... He can't really overwatch this guy because the guy... Yeah. So, pretty much they're donezo until the Scions do something to make it so they can get shot. So now I'll select this guy. Ooh. He's actually one, two, three. He'll be there. Oh, but if he's there. Never mind, he's gonna be there instead. Since he can't do the triangulate for that free victory point. So they triangulated this zone, but he, they still need to triangulate this one. He instead wants to deny 
their control. Oh, he can't be within one of this guy. Hmm. <laughs> They still got the cover. So this guy literally... No, no, no. The guy can shoot him because the guy has to be with beyond two. So... He does have one other act. Oh. That would... That's actually just one action? Okay. Before he moved, he was within three. So he would have triangulated, then moved here. Since he doesn't have... There's no other reason to have it. So triangulate both sides. One victory point so far for... Tempestus, and then he went here to deny, so that way, four APL, oh, does the wound, no, 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 wounds remove movement, not APL, so in that case, yeah, he still should be two, I'll do a double check on that, yep, okay, it just removes one circle from movement, and then worsens the ballistic and weapon skill by one. So, boom, that's taken care of. He's already Overwatch, so he can't Overwatch anymore. This guy's got nothing. This guy still can't Overwatch, so they haven't chosen him. And that's the thing, is they could drop two, try to get two guards, two Scions on there. But since he Consecrated, it just denies, but he would just be able to shoot into one of them with no penalty. And they have conceal orders. At this point, how much? Okay, how much? How many victory points is um, is the turret uh, objectives? One. So if it's one, they'll gain this one, and the. So, because they're triangulate, they're like, hey, we would just be tied if we don't. If we just pass these guys, we're tied. So, they're just passing these ones, keeping the tie. Um, yeah. So, he, since he will never shoot anything, no one else will shoot. Scions, at least, earn this victory point. They earn that victory point. But no one gains that one, since no one controls it. So, two to two for victory points. And they didn't do the protect assets on there, so that didn't really change anything. All right. So now everyone goes up one command point. I forgot that I didn't put a turn counter on here. Well, it's turn two now. Okay. Boop, ba doop. Do, 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 do. Okay. How to do this now? Yeah, Science have only lost two models, amazingly. All right. First, we start with orders for Cardsman. Um, Oh, right, 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 not first orders, first initiative. Ooh, yeah, Scions have the initiative. In that case, they will give them the order of the whole do mission actions for free, because that can help them consecrate grounds and do a lot real quick. Um, and the, uh, yeah, um, Gastonians will do the one where they can shoot twice or fight twice. So, yeah, that means... Oh, yeah, now attack ops selections. Let's see here. Some of them are... All right, so for Scions, theirs are when they do particular actions, not during this point. Oh, um, technically I was supposed to reveal one at the end of last turn 
Reveal this attack op at the end of any turning point in which more enemy operatives than friendly operatives were incapacitated during the turning point for the custodians. So, obviously more um, scions died than uh, um, operatives. Um, so, it's been revealed, but you have to do it... And they have to do for two turning points to get a victory point, so they have to kill more scions now. And then they'll be able to get it. And now they're going to reveal damage limitation. You can reveal the stock op at the target reveal step of any turning point after the first. Um, if no friendly operatives were incapacitated, they can score a victory point. And then if they do it again, they get another victory point. So Scions kind of know that now. So Scions turn. They're actually going to start with this guy, whose first action will be to consecrate the ground. So that way they consecrated it. Because it's a free action for him. And he's just going to shoot into that guy. With his four shots, right? You gotta keep his thing closer. There we are. At four shots, it's going to be forced to hit. Because he's wounded. Do do do. So <laughs> he gets one hit. God, this melt has been shooting so terribly. Um, at least it's AP2, so the guy gets one save. What's one two-up save against that? What do you know? He made it. Um, he's only got one other action. Wait a minute. <laughs> you could just be like, I go over here and consecrate this guy. But no, he's... He's going to stay over there. So he's now going to pass. Here's the thing. With this... With this guy. If he wants to... Try to kill these both, I think there's limitations on your charge. Only if you've done a normal move, dash, or fall back. So he can still shoot and then charge. Right, right, right. So he's just going to shoot into this guy. So... Guardian Spear time. Four shots. <laughs> Two crits. Comes AP1 there, so the guy gets... Well, he gets three saves still, because Consecrated Ground. He increases his defense, so, so that's useful. So now he, he'll he keep one as um a save, so he needs to roll two sixes here. Well, he rolled a bunch of passes, so he'll... um. Deny one crit, deny a regular pass. Unfortunately, just taking one damage was enough to kill him. Boop. And now this guy charges him. Let's see here. How did, he just has to be within one. Within one. All right. And, of course, he selects to fight. So, he's got five attacks. Lethal five. Wow, he missed one. He gets a lethal five. And now the Scion will be hitting back. Um, they have Scion Blades, so they get three attacks. Hitting on threes. Well, that's okay. So, I, so those two missed. Lulls. So they're going to just apply the crit immediately, which is seven, which puts the guy at one wound immediately. 
And then this guy's going to apply this attack. Well, actually, knowing even, so basically, actually, he would have first applied a parry. So that way the guy can't even apply damage to him. So that way he does that one, applies that one, and kills the guy. He doesn't want the guy to do any damage to him. He's already weakened. He doesn't want any chipping of him. So, did that. He's okay. And that's his third action. Um, this guy's going to activate. Let's see here. That guy has 13. That guy has 11. He actually is going to go for this guy. He's going to fire into that guy. With his hot shot volley gun. Because that should be a lot more of... Ouch. Yeah, five shots. This guy didn't consecrate the ground, so five shots. Guy is in cover, but that's it. Oh, 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 crit. And three regulars. That's going to hurt. Crit puts it AP1. So the guy's got two die defense dice left. He will reserve one of them as a pass. Roll the other. Just a regular pass. So he blocks two of the regulars. So he's going to take a crit and a regular, which is seven damage. So he's, he's now wounded, even though he doesn't care about that so there's that so he's just gonna stay up there now these guys he's actually gonna go he's just gonna move over here put himself into cover Consecrate ground because you know might as well do that to hold more objectives So he's consecrated the ground as a second action and his third action. He's gonna sh shoot at this guy So he's gonna shoot with his guardian spear Four shots Do 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 Three regular hits. Um, since it's not... He didn't get any crits. This guy actually will um, still have his three defense. So he'll put one as auto pass. So now he just needs two to save himself. Or he fails them both. So he takes two damage. Or two of them. Which is um, six damage. So he's got two wounds left. Jeez. Especially because Overwatch is still a possibility. Um, Joys. What next? They'll activate this guy. They'll consecrate the ground for free. Well, it's a question. Does he want to stay concealed? Yes. He wants to stay concealed. With those Overwatches, he's staying concealed. Consecrates ground, stays there. These guys can't shoot him, so he'll stay in his concealed and just hold an objective because they need at least one objective. Which now makes these guys have to do something. They'll have this guy go, who will consecrate the ground, and stay concealed. Since the only guy that can shoot him is this guy, who can't overwatch at this point. Let's see here. Perfect. Guys going up here. The reason why I say perfect, this blocks. So this guy can't fire without crossing th these terrains. So can him. So he knows he can't be shot by these two. He can still be shot by that guy. <coughs> so he pops up here. Ooh, oh yeah. He's switching to an engage order. So that's just kind of a quick up and at him. Um... And then he's firing at that guy. And now I'm... Do I reveal this now? 
Yes. He's doing Mark Target for Recon. When an enemy leader is selected, which is the case, as the shooting target of a shooting for a shot action, no other shooting attacks are made for that action. You can attempt to mark that operative instead. Complete the shooting sequence as normal. So, hot shot last gun, four shots, three to hit. That's four hits. That's actually really good for him. Um, this guy hasn't consecrated the ground, which means he still has a defense only of three. So, he'll auto-retain one of them, because what might as well try to reduce. And he gets a crit, which doesn't take off two or anything, so there he goes. He blocks three. So, here we go. Except that if any damage would be inflicted on the enemy operative, it does not lose any wounds. You score one victory point. Boop. So if I do it again in another phase, he can, well, they'll get another victory point. So he did that purely to gain a victory point. <clears throat> so worth his probably his life. So this guy's gonna activate, consecrate ground, and just open fire on that guy. You didn't like that. Four shots. Four hits. No crits. So again, three defense dice. Three four ups for the Scion. One crit. Doesn't matter. He blocks two things. Takes two of them. Um, which puts him at two wounds. So he's still alive. He can be a jerk and continue firing at that guy. Um... Scion's turn. Let's see here. If he does that, ends his point there. Base, I think, base to base, he technically would be within. So, <clears throat> he's going to activate and go into an engage order. And he's going to charge this guy. Well, he's going to charge. So he gets to go an extra circle. Oh, yeah, he's well within. And now he's going to, um, well, fight. Cool. I'm just reading some other things. Alright, so this is the Tepester with a sword. So Tepester will drop a dice. Uh, let's see here. Um, seriously, I guess. He's got a power weapon, so four attacks. Lethal five. So he's just got two crits. <laughs> oh, boys. And then also the Guardian Spear gets to attack, will be attacking back kind of thing. Five attacks. Wow. Okay. So he gets to apply the first attack. So he applies the first attack and with a, as a strike. And boom, he activates another attack op. You can reveal this attack op when you would strike an enemy in operative in combat. Instead of inflicting damage on any on an enemy operative from that strike, you can implant the operative instead. The operative does not lose any wounds from that strike, and you score a victory point. So, I mean, they're scoring victory points. The only way to get another victory point is he has to implant another person. But, <clears throat> so he's done at least one scoring. Um, now the guy will... I mean, he can't parry any of these, because these are crits, so he'll just strike, and... Um, do how much for with the strike? Still five. So he has four wounds left. And let's see here. So all he has to do is apply one of these and he's dead. So there's no need to try to parry or anything because it's not like he can survive. So he'll apply the strike, 
which is six damage. The guy has 19 because he's the leader. So now he's at 13, right? Yeah, 19 minus 6 is 13. So 13, next applied one is death. Again, these guys have been jumping in there to score victory points. Unfortunately, they're holding too many objectives to really keep them from probably holding enough. Um, so now it goes to Overwatch time. He's going to Overwatch this guy because you know what? He might as well try to kill him. Prevent him from doing anything. So four shots. Two's to hit. Six is... Yep, he's got a crit, which is penetrating one. So he has da two defense dice now. He'll still auto save, but he doesn't think he's gonna save enough, so they block two, but he still takes the crit, which is still enough to kill him because any damage was gonna be death. Honestly, him just shooting something like that was good. All right. Yeah, it's like this guy could run over there, but this guy would be still holding the objective, so that wouldn't help. He'll switch to an engage order. You know what? He's and he's gonna kind of pop over here. He's gonna fire into that guy. Now I can still try with his las gun. Hot shot las gun. Four shots. Threes to hit. A crit and a hit. Um, for the um that guy. Because he's um, consecrated the ground, he's got four defense dice. There he goes. Oh, he can auto-retain one of them. But it doesn't matter. He blocks the crit and the regular. So he survives. He does that. Now we get the next Overwatch. Him. He's actually going to shoot at this guy because if he wounds him, he at least won't have any problems. So he'll fire into this guy. With a spear, so four shots. Two's to hit. Oh, and he gets a crit. Okay, this guy's probably dead. Since I only get two defense dice. He'll auto-reserve one of them. Yeah, he'll be able to take out those two, but he takes a regular and a critical, which in total is eight, which is exactly how many wounds he has. Dead. Yeah, that crit, a crit can be deadly. So, Overwatched, Overwatched, he's the only one that hasn't Overwatched. But, as soon as this guy goes, they can't Overwatch, so he's gonna go. He's gonna, oh yeah, he's gonna switch to an engage order. Go over here. And, light up this guy. Four shots. This guy did not Consecrate, so he, he could actually potentially help. Do some damn, Or do no absolutely nothing. Without the order to even take aim, that is... Oof. 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 You did nothing. And this guy can't overwatch due to the fact that you have... The other person has to have models still available for that. So. Let's look at points here. One, two, three, four for um, those guys. One for these guys. That's actually a difference of one point, victory point in this, until we start taking into account. Tac Ops, I think. Um, because execution comes into play again. You score a victory... Oh, no, no. Comes into play now. They finally got two turns. So they finally got one victory point from that tack up. They still have one more turn to try to do that. Um, at the end of the turning point, no operatives were incapacitated, so their damage limitation worked. So they got a second victory point there. Protect assets. No, they didn't kill enough people within 
circle of an object. Actually, wait, no, no, no. He killed two people here who were both within a circle of an objective. So they score a victory point for there. Because of those guys, they were both right there. Because the Melta just couldn't kill him to prevent all of that. If the Melta had done its job, probably wouldn't have lost as many points. And that's them now just taking it away. Now they're four victory points ahead because they took did all their attack ops. And now we go into turn three. One command point up for each team. Who has the initiative now? Well, still Scions. That's good for them. Because they might actually be able to then do something. I think to be able to do orders, they have to have their sergeant alive. So they, I don't think they have orders now. Let's double check that. No, yeah, it just says all Tempest to Scions get the order. It doesn't say like it emanates from the guy, so they can do an order. So we'll do the order take aim. Because they kind of need to. And you know what? The um Custodians will do Aegis of the Emperor. Yeah, so they'll do Aegis of the Emperor to really prevent themselves from probably losing that guy. And do they want to activate Peerless Warriors? They'll activate Peerless Warriors too, just in case they want to. This guy has to like shoot twice just to kill this guy. Scions are going to go first, so shiitake mushrooms, who goes first? Because if he goes first, this guy's probably going to die. If he goes, and if he goes first, this guy might, will probably die. So he'll go first and fire into that guy. Because if he can kill this guy, he can prevent... Um, damage limitation on um, for those guys. So he's gonna fire his um, four last gun, sh hot shot last gun shots. Three roll ones, but not twos. He does a crit though. And the guy still got his three defense. Oh, oh, oh! He rolled two ones. All he could do is block the regular. Granted, the crit does normal damage, which is still three. The guy's down to three. <clears throat> He's still alive. He'll just... Oh, hold on. Well, screw it. He's going he's gonna to stand his ground. He's going to hold the line because they have fewer operatives. He could potentially overwatch that guy. Which means, do they want him to shoot at him right now? And then leave this guy open to being shot at by that guy? Because they now know the marked target. Which means this guy can be marked again. He's going to go now. It's a greater... This guy being able to mark him is worth victory points. For you know, He's trying to deny victory points. So he's going to shoot at this guy. <clears throat> well, first, consecrate ground. Second action, shoot. Two crits and two, yeah. Um, let's see here, can this guy make any saves? He made a save and then he just eats everything else and dies. So, dead. <clears throat> this guy's gonna concentrate ground and um, stay concealed. <laughs> Doing his best. Yeah, this guy's going to hold this objective. Yeah, the custodian's just kind of holding the objectives right now. So since he's done, this guy's now going. First thing, consecrate ground. Second action, shoot that guy. He's got to try to eliminate the guy. Four shots. 
Twos to hit. Sixes will be devastating. Oh, look, a six and three other hits. So now he's only got two defense dice. He fails it. So, obliterated. He doesn't have to worry about that guy. Overwatching. Done. Can't overwatch because that. Uh, then he consecrate ground. Done. Consecrate ground. Done. And this is where it goes really bad. Because <clears throat> at this point, the custodians can just sit there the entire game and just leave that scion to just have no options. Because execution happened one more time, which is a victory point. Let's start counting victory points at least. Damage limitation also was completed. Because they did that again. So another victory point. The protect assets, they're not getting that second one. The Scions will never complete their other ones. There's, well, they can complete one of them. That's not worth the victory points. But now we actually add up the victory points of one, two, three, four. So that's another four. So let's... Uh, one. Uh, there we go. They're now up to 15. Scions get this one, which puts them at six. There's really no point because the only other... The only other... Uh, um, like, objective they can get is if this guy charged one of these, which, you know... His head would be there. He could charge that guy. So, you know what? We'll go into round four. See what happens. He's obviously, you're supposed to play round four kind of thing. Let's see as the initiative. Boop. Actually, somehow, Scions, still. And everyone's still going like this. Basically, can they gain one more victory point? He switches to an... Oh, yeah, everyone goes up by one command point. So, two command points for there, one command point there. Signs will actually spend the command point for the order that he can do actions for free. Or the Consecrate Ground for free. Um, and the Custodians would do the one where he take normal damage. So he would go to Engage Order. Move there. And then he gets to move another circle. out there still within charge range um and then he would consecrate the ground actually because that gives him an extra attack which then with his scion blade he would have four attacks hitting on threes gets a crit even um the guardian spear goes with its five attacks. No crits, two misses. He would apply the regular one to implant. So he gains a victory point there. They would apply a regular attack, which is five. So it leaves him with three wounds left. And then he applies the crit, which is actually four damage. So way more than enough. And he actually kills this guy. And then he, you know, goes like that. So now it's a big question of how does... What do they want to do? What they want to do is move him here. Consecrate the ground. And shoot that guy. Granted, he goes through points here on the um, obscured, uh, the heavy terrain, but not far enough to be obscured. And the guy does get cover. And he's 
got four defense because he's consecrated the ground. So this guy's actually kind of consecrated pretty well. So four shots. Can he kill this guy? That crit might help him. But still, the guy still gets three defense dice. You ought to retain one of them. Roll two others. Um, block two of those, but he needed to block all damage, so he didn't block enough because of the... The crit is enough to always basically kill them, so he's dead. So basically, this guy prevented them from also getting that objective. Now I'm curious. Now he's gonna, since he's moved, fired, he's gonna dash to here. Since he's consecrated that ground at least. This guy's gonna go consecrate this ground. Move here, be within... Oh, do you have to be within... How close do you have to be to consecrate the ground? I just realized I've probably been doing that wrong. They probably... Oh, you actually have to control it to consecrate it. Ah. So the whole sign going in here and then consecrating it? Nope. I've been playing it wrong again. They have to own it. Oh, well. Doesn't really matter. It didn't end up saving him. And I think the other ones were consecrated. Well, no, there's the other guy. I, I did that wrong. Damn it. Anyway. At least that didn't necessarily gain victory points. I gained the whole who had control at the end for victory points. Did it. So anyway, he's consecrated there, moved there, consecrated there. So that way they have all three of these consecrated. And he's going to consecrate this one. So why move like that? Well, they now control this one, this one, this one, and this one, and that one. So they control four again. So... Uh, <laughs> I don't have another dice. Let's see, I'll just do this dice kind of thing. Since, you know, 12, 18, 19 victory points. They don't get any of the other tack ops, so that's that. And... For Scions, all they got was that one. So, in the end, again, Custodians won heavily. It's just, I felt like the Scions were able to put up a little bit better of a fight. And they did. And they killed a Custodian. And they were able to mark things. You know, they, they did some things. It's just... Again, I'm getting used to the game, trying to figure it out how to do things. And Custodians are still pretty darn tough. Anyway, that was an interesting game, and have a fabulous day, everybody.